Hey, it's Josh, and this is your iFanboy Mini for the day. The Mini is the single issue size of the colossal omnibus size uh, comic book video show that we do on uh, Revision3.com. Yeah, I'm wearing my shirt. It's high roll. You got a problem? I think you did. We're here to talk about the book of the month for June. The book of the month for June is Alan Moore's Complete Wildcats from Wildstorm by Alan Moore um, with art by Travis Charest and uh, many others. Many others, because he leaves eventually. I didn't mean to give that away. I picked this book up at the New York Comic Con, a half off bin, um, but it's one of those ones I've been meaning to get for a while, so I was really glad to get it. And then I figured out the reason that I got it in the half off bin is that somebody had razored the pages um, in half, so there's sort of holes in them through the whole thing, which sucks, but it still read really good and it worked out. Um, I was not a huge Wildcats fan. Uh, I read Joe Casey's run in Volume 2 and Volume 3, and those were a lot of fun, but I always took those to be a reimagining of the Wildcats as they were. Um, Wildcats very basically is the CATS, it stands for Covert Action Team. There are two races, uh, alien races, the Caribou and the Daemonites, and they are fighting, uh, their planets are fighting far away, and then these teams have come to Earth to fight here. And where this starts off is that the original Wildcats team has left to go back to Kara, the home planet. Uh, and when they get there, they find out that the war's been over for a really long time. So they've been like those Japanese shut-ins who didn't know that World War II was over. Um, and then uh, back on Earth, they are trying to, uh, they're trying to start a new team of sort of misfits and rebels and, and bad. It's just like, like they're not very good at it and everybody, it's a very typical comic book story, quite honestly. But what Moore does is, he's Alan Moore, so he makes it really good. He puts in, uh, he puts more into these characters than they had previously been. Uh, there's a lot of political t tones going through it, but not so much that it feels heavy-handed. It's just like, this is, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to sort of grab onto, and there's a lot of characters, so there's usually one that you can find. One of the characters that uh, is sort of on the, the ramshackle team back on Earth, the second Wildcats team, is uh, Maxine Manchester, and she is a sociopathic 18-year-old uh, female uh, cyborg girl who's like a punk. And she's so irritating at first. But over the course of the whole thing, you really get to like her. Or at least I did, um, which, was, which, was, uh, which was kind of a surprise because I remember being annoyed with her when she showed up in the Casey books too. Um, another thing I was totally surprised about was that this ties into books that I, I, I had read. And I didn't realize how much of Wildstorm that I'd read. Um, of course, there's the, the, the Wildcats that I'd read after this. But then there was also Sleeper. Um, and the villain in Sleeper, um, Sleeper by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, which is one of the best series I've ever read. Um, the villain in it is Tao, and Tao was created in this book. He joins the, the team back on Earth um, as a good guy, so you have to figure out what happens there. Uh, a good, you know, and then um, the Stormwatch and the Authority from Warren Ellis, uh, a lot of those characters are in this. And, you know, the Wildstorm universe is not so bad. It's a good universe, and there were things that were done good about it, and then... I myself, you know, give it probably a little more grief than it probably should, um, and, and it hasn't been as exciting lately, but, you know, th there's good stuff there, and it's definitely worth checking out. This is a book that I have always meant to read, and I'm really glad I did. The art is largely by Travis Charest, who, um, pretty much a Jim Lee acolyte at this point. I think later his art uh, matured a little bit, and he it became his own style. Uh, and then he went on to do French comics or something like that. He kind of disappeared from the scene here. And then other artists come in and fill in. And the art is really the one thing that reminds you of the time period from when this came. This was in 95 about. And the costumes are garish and it's sort of silly at times. Uh, and, and, and the names are kind of awkward. But Moore does a lot to ground this in reality into something that I want to read and something that uh, modern comic book readers could read too. Listen, I've got a full written review on this over at ifanboy.com. You can go take a look at that while you're there. Uh, you got any questions, you can write us at contact at ifanboy.com and get to revision3.com slash ifanboy for more uh, videos. So that's all, and we'll see you later. Thanks.